Today I'm going to show you how anyone can get started on Mid Journey in just five minutes. AI is completely taking over in 2023. We've seen the rise of ChatGPT, and we've also seen the rise of text to image bots such as Mid Journey. If you're a book publisher or you're just trying to create images, Mid Journey is a fantastic opportunity to do so at a very low cost to create bespoke images. But using AI for the first time can be a little bit daunting. It uses a Discord server. So if you're not familiar with Discord, it can seem a little bit jarring. So I'm going to show you how to get started with Mid Journey. The first step is to go to midjourney.com. You'll end up on the homepage that looks like this and you'll want to join the beta and enter your information. Seeing as I already have an account, I will sign in to skip this step. Once you're signed in, you'll be taken to your homepage where you can see your gallery of creations and you'll have the opportunity to manage your sub. To start with, you'll be on the free plan, which gives you the opportunity to test mid journey. But after testing, you'll want to upgrade to at least the standard plan. The standard plan is $10 a month and it gives you a certain amount of hours, which relates to a certain amount of images that you can create. If you want to publish any of your creations, then you'll need to be on a paid subscription in order to have the rights to do so. Once you're signed up, once you have your subscription in place, if that's what you want to do, you need to click down here and go to the Discord. So this is what Mid Journey looks like. If you've used Discord before, this will be familiar to you, but if not, don't worry, I'm gonna take you through how to use it. When you signed in, you should go to welcome and it will give you all of the information you need here. It might be worthwhile reading through this get started guide. But for now, what you need to do is go to a newcomer room and then click on the mid journey bot here. You just type hello. <laughs> You'll be taken to a direct message with the mid journey bot. And this is where you can brief in your images. So what I've done is I've favorited this URL, the direct message to the mid journey bot, because this is where you'll come to brief your images in. So basically how this works, it's like a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you type something in and the mid journey bot will respond. So if you're new to discord and you don't know how it works, you might be a little bit stumped, but all you need to do is put a slash and that gives you options for talking to the mid journey bot. So as you can see here, imagine is the prompt that you would use to create images. And then you would type your prompt in there. But as you can see, you also have things like settings where you can adjust your settings. You have info where you can see how many um, images you have left for the month and what package you're on. And you also have fast and relax mode. You have a certain amount of fast hours per month and that basically just creates images faster for you. As you scroll down, you've got other, other prompts such as help. Um, you can inv invite someone with a free trial, etc. So on the settings, you have all of these options that you can play with. This goes back to previous versions of Mid Journey. My recommendation is always to stay on Mid Journey 4 because it's the most up to date. But Niji mode, but Niji mode is quite interesting. That's basically like an anime mode. So if you're creating coloring books for kids, you might want to try that. Then you have all of the qualities. I would recommend staying if you can on the high quality, which charges you two times the cost, or you can stay on base quality. You can then select your stylization. Medium is the kind of default, but if you're looking for a super stylized image, you know, if you're looking for 3D CGI, high detail, you might want to go on to style very high. But for what I use it for, I think medium works fine. Then the default option is a regular upscale, but you also have the option to do a light and beta upscale. I find that staying on regular produces the best output. And then you also have the opportunity to upscale it further if you want to. These ones down the bottom, um, if you pay for a certain subscription, you can get stealth mode, which means no one else can see your images. You have remix mode, which basically takes the previous image you've made and adjusts it rather than starting from scratch. And then you have your fast and relax mode. So as you can see here, I'm on fast mode at the moment. So the prompting is a little bit quicker. Right, settings done. Let's create our first image. All you need to do is write imagine, and then you put your prompt in here. So we are going to create a Star Wars 
coloring page and let's see what it comes up with. So as you can see how it works, this mid journey gives you four options per prompt. You can click on these to make them larger. And if any of these work for you, you can upscale them. Below you have the upscale options. So this is one, two, three, four. Um, and if you like any of them, you can just click the upscale. And if you want to see variations of them, say this one in the bottom right, for example, say you quite like it, but you want to see some variations, you can click V, the V option. This will give you four variations of the same image, just slightly different. So here we go. We've got four different variations. And as you can see, the, the elements in the background are changing and slight di different details, etc. So say if this was my favorite, the number two, I would click upscale two. I would have a little sip of coffee. And then here it is. Here's your very own coloring page that you can click open in browser, save image, and you have your very first coloring page. This will be fairly low resolution. So what you can do is either light upscale it to upscale it somewhat or beta upscale to upscale it further. If we look at how this works, we can see. Okay, so here is the upscaled image. And when we compare them side by side, you can see the differences. As you can see, the one here on our left is our original image. And the one on the right is our beta upscale. And you can see that you lose some detail. Some of the features might go a little bit funny. If you zoom in, you can see that this is much better quality, but you do lose, I don't know, you, you, it just doesn't, it's not a direct upscaling at the moment. So one way you can get around this is to use bigjpg.com, which is an image enlarger. This is an optional step but it will enlarge the size of your AI images without reducing the quality, which is what happens on Discord when you use a beta or a light upscale option. You, you can try this out for free, but if you, if you want to do it for all of your images, then you'll need a paid subscription to this. Enlarging the images can take a little bit of time, but once it's done, we can open it. So if you look at the differences, the enlarged image is very, very similar to the original. But if you zoom in, this is the original and this is the enlarged image, which will provide much better printing and be a better experience for coloring. But this applies for everything. So if you're doing anything that's print on demand, if you're creating artwork, anything that's printed or needs to be a certain resolution, you probably want to enlarge it to enhance the experience. Okay, so that was a completely optional step, but it's a lovely tip that helps you to create better imagery. Back to Mid Journey, we go to the Imagine and I'll show you a couple of tips. So again, if we look to do a Star Wars coloring page, there are additional prompts that you can do. Putting dash dash AR at the end, followed by the aspect ratio that you're looking for, will allow you to tell Mid Journey what aspect ratio to output the artwork in. So common ones are two by three, nine by 16, the, the basic is always one by one. So this is useful if you're creating a different size book, for example, or you want to create a canvas art. The aspect ratios are really, really helpful. And you can also use a dash dash to do no comments, which tries to remove something from your image. So for example here, I could put no border to remove a border from the outside. Let's see what happens. So as you can see here, we don't have a border, but we do have logos and texts and backgrounds and all this. So what I might do now, if I wanted to keep going, would be to put no text, no background uh, as additional prompts. So I can just copy this again. Do imagine no text, no background. And this just shows why mid journey and all AI is not perfect because I've given it a command of no text yet. It still has text. When you turn on the remix mode, it allows you to do variations using the previous image as a base. So say if we liked this one, the number three, by turning on the remix mode, we can click V3 and give it an additional prompt to try and create variations like that image, but with additional elements, removing elements, etc. You can also use slash blend to blend two or more images together. 
let's see what happens if we blend this beautiful fantasy background with a Star Wars colouring page. But this is a good way of putting like a character within a certain world. And so here you have beautiful background, which is kept and it's put like Star Wars characters within it. So you can see the kind of the, the benefit of using the blend, but your kind of day to day prompts will be imagine and then requesting whatever you like. And remember, you can be as creative and descriptive as you want. You might need to do some trial and error to see what prompts work for you. And there are prompt guys out there on the internet. But as you can see here, just by doing two different Darth Vader prompts, the variety is crazy. So here we have a 16-bit Darth Vader, which is really, really cool. All the way up to a CGI style, hyper-realistic Darth Vader, which is incredible. So that's a basic introduction to Mid Journey. I hope you found it helpful. Any questions that you've got, leave in the comments. But this tool is fantastic for, for authors, for producers, anyone who wants to create images for a really minimal amount of effort and cost. All right. Thanks so much for checking the video out. I'll see you on the next one.